What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and the unthinkable has finally happened. A country is actually going to ban loot boxes in gaming. For the last couple weeks, Belgian has been investigating if there's any actual link between addiction, gambling, and loot boxes in gaming. This is an issue we've talked about a lot, but it's hard to know that there's an actual link. Well, it turns out their highest court ruled it has. Their chief justice, which is the highest dude in all of their law system, had said directly, quote, putting gamification of unlockables is dangerous, especially to younger audiences. They said that it is dangerous in order to make it where you're buying new gear. Stuff like that can really mess with your mind. Now, the reason this court is so ridiculously important is when you think about it, countries, when they actually outlaw something, it affects a lot of other nations. If we manage to make gay marriage legal here, then other countries are more likable, likely to do it all further down the line because they go, okay, well, like, dudes kissing doesn't really do anything bad, it's totally fine, so it didn't really affect America, we'll legalize it here. Well, the same thing could actually happen as this spreads, because Belgium isn't doing this by themselves. Their chief justice said they're gonna, they're gonna be doing it in all of Europe. They're going to outright ban loot boxes everywhere they can, and that's just so nuts. Now, the thing that really kind of strikes me most about this is in the court proceedings, they specifically mentioned two games that they investigated, Overwatch and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, it's this Overwatch part that's more interesting to me because when you think about it, this is the type of loot crate that a lot of us are more okay with. It's cosmetic only. You're logging in, playing the game, and getting new costumes. It doesn't actually affect the gameplay itself, but according to their findings, even that is actually affecting the behavior of gamers. This is such a monumental thing, and personally, I actually think that this is a massive breakthrough. Ever since Shadow of War earlier this year, where you could actually buy new soldiers for your army, something's been tickling in the back of my brain. The idea that there's just going to be more and more microtransactions tucked into the corner of single-player experiences. The idea that they're going to try and push people into unfair situations and see if they can trick them into buying their way out. Laws like this could absolutely deadlock that. If they don't manage to outright ban it, they end up. They may at least have to change it so that it has to be incredibly fair. The things you can buy are stuff that's already very easy to unlock. Say that I'm playing like Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, there was this special armor you could get called the Scorpion Suit. It was good, but it was basically only as good as the best armor in the game, which still wasn't that great. All it really did is give you a little bit more defense and bigger inventory slots. It was a microtransaction that didn't really break the game. Whereas, honestly, some of the loot crates in Star Wars Battlefront 2 were a freaking train wreck. Seriously, there were people who were spending $100 going up into space battles and killing 17 people back to back flawlessly. Clearly, it breaks the this system in their favor. Already I'm imagining all the court battles that are about to happen, and normally I don't really fantasize about court battles, but it's so cool to think about the fact that there's going to be a lot of games coming up that are going to have to fight for the right to have loot crates. It's finally going to be reversed. We've been seeing this slow exceeding, this slow rise of loot crates and, and trying to make it where extra monetization would be more acceptable. This court ruling is going to push that way back. Now, in order to legally put stuff like uh, special costumes that can only be gotten with uh, loot crates, they'll have to prove it in court. Honestly, I'll be happy if we just go back to the point in time where you paid for a specific item. I'm okay with there being like a special uh, unlockable costume. Say I'm playing Splinter Cell and I can unlock a crazy Assassin's Creed outfit for an extra 50 cents. Stuff like that is ridiculous and I won't be buying it personally, but I have no problem with it. However, if Sam Fisher has to go on a mission, earn Sam Fisher bucks, and then uses Splinter Cell dollars to open up Assassin's Creed loot crates, now we have a big ass problem. Something like that is built to addict people, especially younger audiences. Adults like us can understand that money isn't easy to get. It takes a lot of hard work and long hours to get even enough money to pay your bills. So you're less likely to spend cash on a random little frilly thing in a game. 
children are the most susceptible to this. There's so many stories you read about of a kid getting a cell phone game that's connected to their parents' account and unknowingly they spend three or four hundred dollars within a week because they don't realize that those shortcuts actually cost your parents food and time and, and stress. The fact that this has been pushed back and the fact that it is being legally classified as gambling is a massive, massive deal. This could realistically change all of gaming for the better, but there could be unforeseen consequences. I do think that we're going to start to see more season pass type stuff coming up. I do think we're going to start to see maybe even games that try and sell you the single player is one package and the multiplayer is one package. Because if they're not able to actually monetize the game in these other ways, like microtransactions, I do think that they're going to try and break the experience down in other ways that they can get away with legally. We really should all be celebrating. This is a giant victory for gaming in general and Honestly, I think I'm going to buy a Belgium flag just to try and support their nation. I really can't wait to see this spread from place to place, and I can't wait to just see how this all unfolds. If anybody from Belgium is actually watching this, I want to do a giant salute to you and your justice system. This is super awesome, and I greatly look forward to watching this spread throughout Europe in the coming years. So... Thank you to each and every one of you for making your voices heard by us being very vocal about how broken loops, loot boxes have gotten in the, these last uh, few months. We've managed to make real change that will hopefully last forever. But what are your thoughts on all this? Do you think that any loot crates are absolutely horrible like I do? Or do you think that some stuff, including cosmetic loot crates, should be allowed? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends to spread the good news, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh my freaking gosh, this is still so freaking crazy. Honestly, I'm going to go reread all the news articles again just because I'm still so amazed that this really is happening. What a freaking time to be a gamer. 2017 is our year. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.